Hey, this is Mike, creator of the graphic novel Spectre of Dark Matter. This is the second video in uh, three videos that I'm doing about coloring your comic books. So if you haven't seen part one yet, go back and check that out and then come back here to see the, uh, the part two video. Um, we're going to pick up right where we left off in the last video where we were coloring our, my character Spark here. Again, I'm just showing you techniques for how to color your comic books. Um, this is the cover of my book and this is the technique I use to do something like this. So we'll pick up where we left off. Um, you can see we've got several layers here, black lines, white background, and then several of the layers of the, uh, you know, the different colors here isolated. Uh, I'm going to go back to my palette here to pick uh, my next set of colors, which I'm going to use this green trim color. Selecting the eyedropper tool, changes the box to green. And then we're going to create a new layer for green trim. Okay, so again, I'm just going to select the pencil tool, fill in the green. Uh, the green is going to go on the trim around on the sleeves, around the neck. And this little flap here on the on the coat. So fill that in, and then the trim around the waist as well. Now this um, my coloring methods here. Just I always start with just real basic stuff. Um, you basically get your base colors down. And then you can add some, some fun gradients and shadows later. Um, you can use these techniques to do the interior. If you, do, if you want to do color interiors, you can, you can do that. Um, again, as I stated in the first video, I basically do black and white comics. But I like to see what the colors look like in, uh, uh, oops. I like to see what the colors, what the characters look like in color, and, and so um, also gives the the reader a better indication of, you know, what what the character looks like in breathing, living, breathing color. So I'm just doing a little clean up here. And, uh, so we're starting to come together. Now we've got our trim. The last major item is these boots here. So the boots I break up into two pieces. I've got uh, a black boot and then like a gray gray trim there. So we'll just, I, I can actually just, I don't need to go back to my palette. I can just select black here. Uh, make a new layer for boots. And um, I'm gonna use my uh, magic wand tool. So select black lines, magic wand, selects the area inside and I could probably do them both at the same time now actually you notice right here there's a little gap here and what happens is if I select the magic wand it's gonna fill in here which is gonna be a lighter gray so right now I'm just gonna fill in this boot with black let's go to boots fill it in black and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to my black lines layer and just kind of uh, fill that in. Um, just select a really small pixel. You know, one pixel is fine. And I can just join that and then I also notice there's a little gap right here. So I can just fill that in. Make sure. So what happens is, is if you select use your magic wand tool and there's a, a gap it'll basically marquee the whole space. So I just want to keep it within the boot here. So select it now. It worked. Select boots layer, paint bucket, and fill it in. Very easy. Okay, and then the final thing is the the gray trim around the boots, and I also will use it uh, for the sole of the, sh of the boot. So I'll select the gray, and I'm gonna just call it boot trim. And just color this bad boy in. You 
go over the lines, select the eraser. Just That's the nice thing about having layers or using layers is that you can just erase that one layer. If I go outside the lines, if everything's on one layer, you start erasing more than you intend to, which is not fun. And that's that. And then I guess the final thing is I have some, uh, I guess the last thing would be this little um, the little shoulder patch here and this little logo on the, on the jacket are not exactly blue, so I'm actually going to erase that. I go into the blue coat layer and then taking the blue out of there. And this little S logo here is yellow. And so the final thing I need to do for this is to fill in the S with yellow. Okay, so this is what we have now. Now, this is great. It's basically almost done. I've got my base layers um, finished. Now, we're going to stop the video here. In the next video, I'm going to add shadows and highlights and then, you know, really add a little bit of dimension to this uh, flat color rendering. So we'll see you in video three. See you.